Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bowling University studio for the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger, and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. Our mission here at the university is to enrich people's lives personally and professionally, and the Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Now, if you're joining us for Profit Break for the first time, welcome. We are glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving your profitability. Today, we're joined by Candy Kelly, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Trainertainment, who provides fun training with serious results. The Trainertainment team has been great partners of the industry and Bowling University. They've been with us in facilitated programs at our management schools, boot camps, uh, just all around the country, great, great folks. Now, Candy has an extensive background in training with the entertainment industry, serving in various roles with Monkey Joes before joining the Trainertainment team. Candy, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Great to see you. We love our trainertainment friends there. Uh, so, hey, I know you're going to be with us at uh, Bull Expo in June. We're excited about having you. You're going to talk about SOAR as a way of customer service. So let's start out with first giving a little background. What is SOAR and what does it mean for those joining today? Of course. First, let me say there's no way you're as excited as I am about joining you guys for Bull Expo this year. So um, SOAR is an acronym that we created to just elevate guest experience and customer service. And so those four letters each stand for something. So S stands for surprise and delight. And a lot of times we use that term in marketing, surprise and delight in marketing. But I really don't see any reason why it can't also be used in customer service. And my favorite example of a surprise and delight is when a business that you use or, do, or does business with sends you a handwritten thank you card. In today's world, that type of personal touch is completely unexpected. And so in turn, it will delight the guest that you had. O stands for over deliver. And a lot of people when we teach this can get hung up on this word, but I'm not really asking you to go above and beyond all of the time because if you're doing it all of the time, it doesn't make it special anymore. That should be your level of service. What I'm asking you to do is do what you promise you'll do all the time, but then just look for those extra small steps that can elevate your consistent service. Open the door for someone, offer someone to drive up to load up some birthday gifts, anticipate their needs without them having to ask you for it. Those types of things can all fit in over deliver. The next letter is A, and A is my favorite part of the strategy. A stands for accommodate. Um, it's really important for us to meet the guests where they are. And the definition of accommodate is to adjust to something or someone else's needs. And, you know, at Train Entertainment, we always believe that we're in service to others. And by that, that's what helps make us all successful. And so by adjusting to what someone else needs, it's just not enough to say, oh, I have these services. You can come use them if you'd like. We must offer those services in a way that allows the guests to feel as if their needs are met when they need them to be met. And then R is refine. This is the perfect word to sum up this strategy. The definition of refine is to remove impurities and unwanted elements. And so this last phase, it's not a phase that will ever come to an end. It's an ongoing process. The moment that you stop refining what your customer service strategy is, is the moment that that foundation that you work so hard to build will begin to crack. The needs of our guests are constantly evolving and changing. And so we have to constantly evaluate our steps of customer service to make sure that we're meeting those evolving needs. Uh, thank you, Candace. It's a great overview. I'm making some notes. So surprise, over deliver, accommodate, refine. Uh, great steps for, for all of us there. Now, look, there are a lot of customer training programs out in the marketplace. So mm -hmm. can you share with us today is what's different about SOAR? Yeah. Like I previously said, SOAR is not created to take the place of a foundation of good customer service. Each business will need to identify their pillars of great guest service and then train their staff on those. You have to make sure that that foundation is solid and everyone is on board with that. SOAR is meant to take customer service a little bit further. It's meant to build on that foundation. I believe there's no limit to customer service. Like, when are you ever done? Like, oh, my customer service is as good as it can be. It can't get any better. That 
endpoint doesn't exist. And so that is what the SOAR practice is created to remind us of, that once we have a solid foundation, we can look for ways and incorporate ways that consistently deliver a little bit of additional magic for our guests as they come through our doors. Yeah, I heard you mention a couple of terms there, you know, foundation and core. You talked about the, the foundation of customer service and, and the core. So what do you believe is the core of any good customer service foundation? Um, I believe that respect and consistency is the core of any good customer service foundation. When I think of brands that have a great reputation for delivering excellent customer service, if I break down what they're doing to deliver that customer service, not one of those brands is doing anything that's magical or fantastical. However, what those brands are doing is they made a promise to their customers. And within those promises, they are consistently delivering on that promise every single time you go and do business with them. Um, it may just be to say my pleasure at the end of a transaction. It may be to have a greeting every single time, but they've identified pillars that are really important to them. They've made their promises to the, their customers and they deliver consistently every single time. Uh, it's amazing. You said my pleasure as you were giving that response and answer to us. First thing that came to my head was Chick-fil-A, you know, mm -hmm. kind of the gold standard we think about is setting that foundation and, and the fact that they've taken the simple things that you mentioned and turn that into uh, their, their, their core and their foundation. And, and as you know, they don't waver from it. Never waver from that. Yeah. So if okay. they do, people believe like we'll make an excuse for them. They must be have a bad day. It's like that is their norm and people know that. Yeah. And, and how inverted that is compared to what we normally experience now when you have that occasional good experience at another brand that that will rename nameless there. So, OK, mm -hmm. great overview of what that is. So now I know you're going to go into this a little deeper when you join us in, in June there. But for those of us here today, so how do I get the team involved, right? So I've decided on the program, I'm buying into SOAR. What's the best way to get the team involved in, in really SOAR or really any other program for that matter? Yes, any training program that you invest in for your location and business, the best way to get your team involved is to not allow it to be a one-time engagement. Um, that's a mistake that's made often. I was in operations for many years and have to admit, I made that mistake at times too. As an operator, we'll get excited about a training initiative, we'll bring it in, we'll talk about it one good time, and then it wavers and goes away. SOAR was built to be an to be ongoing, like I mentioned earlier. And so discuss it at every pre-shift rally, every staff meeting, invite the team to share times that they've experienced any of these four steps in the, in the wild and bring that back to talk about. And then challenge them to find ways to incorporate it into your own strategy. Um, it's not just a one-time conversation or a one-time training process or something that you can do in a workshop on a weekend. It has to be part of your conversation day in and day out. Yeah, it sounds like what I hear you saying is you have to be consistent. And, you know, we use the term culture a lot these days. It has to just really be part of your, your culture. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're coming out of some difficult times here, right? I mean, we've all had a couple of difficult years with all this going on with, you know, the pandemic and all that it's about there. Um, you know, we have businesses that are struggling with staff and um, seems like, you know, why do you feel this sore is just so timely and relevant coming out of this? Why does it matter? We all, we all believe the guest experience is one of the most important factors in creating the loyal fans. It costs less to keep a loyal um, customer than it does to attract a new one. However, I believe and why I worked so hard on creating this with Train Entertainment is that we've allowed the idea of great guest service to become quite complicated, even in recent years, pre the last couple. And when you make something that complicated, it seems like it's unattainable. And if it seems like it's unattainable, then people will not work so hard for it or they will not put in the steps that they need. But the essence of great guest service really has not changed that much in all of the years that I've been doing operations and working in customer experience. Guests want to be treated in a respectful, consistent manner. And so I just want to help people solidify their foundation first and then help them build some magic on top that fits their business, that fits their culture, that fits what's important to them with these four simple practices. 
Great reminder that uh, while we have had a difficult couple of years, the more things are different, they're really just the same. People are looking for that great guest experience no matter what. Yes. Yeah. Well, Candy, thank you so much for joining us today. We are excited about having with, uh, you with us in just a short time in Las Vegas, and uh, can't wait to see you there. Thanks. I'm excited, too. Yeah, great. Well, hey, folks, remember, if you'd like to learn even more about providing a great guest experience, Candy be, will be one of our featured speakers at Bowl Expo in Las Vegas this June. Candy's 90-minute learning lab, Serving Your Guest and Soar Above Your Competition, will be taking place on Tuesday, June 28th at 415, and you are not going to want to miss it. As we wrap up another edition of the Bowling University Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next time for another great episode. Now, if you have any question about today's show or like additional information, you can reach any us anytime at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. The Profit Break is now available when you want it, and we have new episodes premiering every month. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.